reading goals. If I set myself goals or resolutions, will I even stick to them? You know, the older I get, the more I find that setting myself these certain targets uh, at the beginning of every year is kind of an artificial process because by this point I've pretty much set up my life the way I want it and especially in regards to reading I I sort of read the books that I want to and even if I set myself uh, a target of oh I want to read more poetry this year so I'm going to read 12 new books of poetry and then I find myself after a couple or three months uh, sort of falling off from that goal and then towards the end of the year I'm scrambling to read 10 books of poetry before the year ends and that's just kind of silly. So no, I'm not going to set myself certain targets or anything, but I think it is a good time to take stock and think about how I'm doing things both with my reading life and organizing my reading life, uh, but also how I organize my channel and how I talk about and communicate about books online with other people and other readers. So I'm going to look at those two aspects, uh, but also I have a couple of general things that I want to discuss first in, in regards to, to reading and how we go about reading. And I think particularly over the, the past couple of years and over the time of the pandemic. You know, I made a, a video talking about sort of the anxiety surrounding uh, lockdown ending and going out and socializing again. And I think, you know, we've changed so many things about our life, you know, particularly in regards to our working lives of those of us that can work from home now often work from home, you know, semi-permanently or uh, have some sort of system set up. And, and I think the same can be said about our, our socializing lives. Like I, I, you know, more towards the like uh, in early in my adulthood, but not so much these days. But I, I felt a uh, pressure to go out and, and socialize more and, and to to, to see people and, and do things. And, and I spent so much of my early 20s like going out to pubs and, and chatting with people that I, if I'm quite honest, like sometimes, you know, some people that I just knew casually, obviously not my good friends, but people I just know kind of casually, like it was kind of like forced socializing time. I was just finding myself discussing things with them that I wasn't that all that interested in spending half the time thinking actually I'd rather be home reading a lot of the time so I think this is a point where we can say like oh you don't have to go out and socialize and do all these things just to because you feel this social pressure to 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 go out having this this time at home is is has given us like a chance to say actually it's okay to spend time at home just reading and I think that's kind of an affirmation that's good to give ourselves every once in a while. But at the same time, I think it's important to find a balance in, in this because, you know, I did spend time in my early adulthood as well saying like, like, no, I'm not going to do any of those things. I'm not going to socialize at all. And there was like periods of time for maybe months even when I would just sit at home doing nothing but reading Dostoevsky and finding myself getting really depressed because I, I wasn't having any social interactions and and I uh, was just so locked into books. And so I think it is important to find a right balance in your life. And I don't know if anyone else finds this as well, but I've yeah definitely found this in my life. So, you know, it's it's choosing the, the time when you know you're really gonna enjoy going out and spending time with other people and then choosing times to spend time with yourself to, to read alone and enjoy that period and you know and things have slightly changed over the years and that we're communicating with each other more online about books and and over the past several years I've found that such an enriching and wonderful experience so I think even if I had that now of spending a period at home just doing nothing but reading Dostoevsky spending a bit of time in the morning or evening online discussing it with people online you know that would give me that sort of social charge and feeling like I'm still connected with other people rather than just sat here on my own with all my own thoughts thoughts and stewing in all of my own thoughts. Um, so yeah, that's something that I want to 
remember in the year going forward and uh you know and also it's uh, i i've had a nice experience recently of um when i've not been that busy in the afternoon i'll go out walking throughout the city because i have the wonderful experience of living in london in this beautiful city and uh, and seeing you know the the city around me and um and having this solitary time which is sort of out sort of around other people and I'll go out to, to lunch and sit there reading during while I'm having lunch and 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 then go walk out in the city and listen to an audiobook while I'm walking around and and so you know can have this experience of reading while also being out in the world. Another big general thing that I want to remind myself of and that I periodically need to say to myself and remind myself is that I don't need to read everything and i know that we as readers can often be really greedy and and want to read all of the books and get so excited about new books that we want to read or old books that we want to read or books that we want to reread and i think that's a wonderful impulse i think that's a really great thing and it's like a hunger for knowledge and entertainment and that's that's a wonderful thing but at the same time there are only so many hours of the, in the day um reading is predominantly like a leisure activity you know unless it's actually part of your work and i only read uh for pleasure it's you know it's not my job all of these bookish things i do online it's not part of my job it's just um something i do for fun and so i need to remind myself that that i don't have to read all of the books and it's something that i personally can get somewhat anxious about and stressed about because i'm lucky enough to be sent a lot of books by publishers um you know and a lot of these i don't request um I, they're just sent to me and already i have three big stacks of books that are on my floor in my library because i don't have anywhere else to put them um that are new for 2022 and a lot of them look really interesting uh but i don't know when I'm going to get time to read all of them. I probably won't get time to, to read all of them, but that's okay. And we're already a week into 2022 and I've not completed uh, a book yet. I'm, I'm still reading the, the book that I was reading at the beginning of the year. And, and that's totally fine because I'm just enjoying the reading experience. And I also have a shelf um, three shelves which are filled with books um, from 2021 that I didn't get around to reading yet and so I like I'm mindful of that as well as all of the other books that I have on my shelves and um, that I've been wanting to to get to you on my like standard bookshelves um, that I, I still want to read and uh, and so yeah I'm conscious of all of these books that I want to read and uh, but you know I've, I've gotten much better recently at having this mantra of just like I don't need to read everything and that's okay. So what will I actually be reading this year? Well I, I want to continue reading a lot of things that I normally do. Um, you know I pr predominantly like to read new fiction so I, I want to read some more exciting new debut authors um, because you know I there were a lot of debuts I read last year that I, I found really exciting and enlivening and you know it was just a totally new voice in, in fiction, um, which I find so thrilling. Um, but there are also uh, authors I've read before um, that have new books coming out. And I made a whole video about my most anticipated reads, but this is just really the tip of the iceberg. There are so many books coming out by authors I've read before that I'm really excited about and looking forward to, including Monica Ali has a, a new novel out and the Irish writer Colin Barrett and Ali Smith has a new book out. Louise Erdrich has a new novel out, which um, was out in the States last year, but is finally being published in the, the UK. Uh, also, the author, uh, No Violet uh, Bulawayu, um, who had a, a debut novel out, like, I think, eight or so years ago, which was so good. Uh, but um, she has a new novel out, finally, um, which is really exciting. Also, Emily St. John Mandel has a new book out. Um, Steve Toltz. Sophie Ward has a new novel out. Uh, Sandra Newman. Um, as, as I talked about in my, my classics video, there's a novel she's 
writing, which is inspired by 1984, and she's telling it from a new perspective. But she also has another new book out, so that's really exciting um, as well. Of course, Joyce Carol Oates has um, two new books um, that I know of, which are coming out. She may have more, which might pop up on the publication calendar because she published five books last year. Um, but she has a collection of short stories coming out in May uh, called Extenuating Circumstances, and she has a new novel out. Uh, in August called Babysitter. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, Camilla Shamsi also has a new novel out. And uh, Nino Haratichvili, um, who wrote The Eighth Life, also um, has a new book coming out um, towards the end of this year, a new translated book coming out. Um, so yeah, that's all really, really exciting. Uh, I also still want to follow book prizes this year. You know, there are the main ones that I, I always follow, um, like the Women's Prize and the International Booker Prize. Um, so the Women's Prize will have their short list coming out, um, sorry, their long list coming out on March 8th. And uh, the International Booker Prize will also be announcing their, their long list um, sometime in March. And then the, the main Booker Prize um, will also be uh, announcing their list in um, July as usual. But, but then there are also, you know, lots of other book prizes that I find really interesting, you know, especially if they specialize in a certain subject or, or kind of focused on a particular kind of writing. And I do definitely want to um, continue to follow more nonfiction book prizes because I just find that's a great way to integrate some uh, more nonfiction into to my my reading. And um, so, yeah, I still want to follow the Wolfson History Prize. I always um, read a book that's nominated for that award every year. And last year, um, I, I read Black Spartacus about the, uh, the uh, revolutionary Toussaint Le Mature, um, the, the Haitian revolutionary, and uh, also um, following the Wainwright Prize um, for nature writing and nature conservation. Um, I read a few books um, that were listed for that prize last year, including Entangled Life, which I totally forgot to talk about in my last wrap-up video, um, which I read in December and which I enjoyed so much. Um, Entangled Life is such a fascinating look at this whole worlds of fungi which we don't even think about. Fungi, you know, themselves take so many different forms and um, yeah, and was so, f it really made me reassess how we think about memory and consciousness and and intelligence and uh, yeah, it was such a fascinating account. Uh, but uh, yeah, also want to follow the, the Bale Gifford um, prize, um, which is also a nonfiction prize, and which last year they their their winner was Empire of Pain by Patrick Rodden Keefe, um, which was such a fascinating account and made me really reevaluate how I think about, um, you know, not just the Sackler family themselves, but the whole like drug industry in in America and was was so fascinating. So yeah, I, I do want to continue to read some more nonfiction through, especially through these prizes, because, you know, they highlight some of the best um, new nonfiction around. And uh, yeah, and I do want to read more classic books. So I made a whole video about 22 classic books um, that I want to read over the course course of the year and I probably I definitely I couldn't say you know now for certain I definitely won't get around to reading or rereading those books if I've read them before um, but you know I do want to try to get to reading at least some or even a lot of them uh, but also uh, I want to read more Anthony Trollope and and just really handily um, in April I think on April 4 no April 18th um, the Trollope Society which I've followed before and um, they do these big reads these big group reads with people for books and then um, they have uh, every other week I think they have an online meeting where there's a discussion about the book and um, oftentimes people give a presentation about it and so on April 18th they are starting to read uh, The Small House at Allington um, which is the fifth novel in the Barsetshire um Chronicles um, series, and uh, I'm still I'm reading the fourth book at the moment and really enjoying it. But I'm still actively reading that, and um, yeah, so I'm I'll be so excited to to read this and read it along actively with other people and you know Trollope fans that know so much more about his work than I do, so have really great insights into him. So and um, so yeah, I'll put a link to that below because that's a free thing you can sign up for um, if you've been reading Anthony Trollope as well and want to read that. 
that and um, yeah, participate along with that. And um, you know, hopefully I'll see you in some of the, the online discussions. And um, so, yeah, so those are all my reading goals. That's quite a lot of reading to get a, get along with at, at the, for the, the time being. Um, but then also generally, I just want to look at sort of channel goals and and how I make videos and what kinds of videos I want to make and this is much more open-ended in a way and um, although last year I, I did make a lot more single review videos and I really enjoyed doing that and you know not so much as like this is the authoritative review of this book I just want to give like my honest like immediate reaction after I finish reading a book, you know, if, if I feel really passionate about it, I won't make a single review video about a book if I don't feel interested in it or that I feel like I have something new to offer about it. Um, but that just, yeah, to give my, my honest, like, feelings about it afterwards, which I always really enjoy watching those videos too of, of people that are so passionate about a book that they just want to talk on and on and on about it. And if I've read that book or if that's a book that I'm interested in reading, those are the kinds of videos that I like watching um, as well. So uh, so yeah, I want to continue um, doing that as well as making videos that are surveys of, of book prizes that I think um, sound really interesting, especially if they're, um, yeah, the, the books listed for them um, predominantly sound quite interesting. But I want to remind myself as well that I don't need to read every book that's been long listed for a prize. Like last year, I read every book on the long list for the Women's Prize, every book on the long list for the Booker Prize, the main Booker Prize. And, uh, and not all those books were an absolutely satisfying experience and i sort of went into it knowing that that um that that you know there were particular books on the list that i probably wouldn't enjoy so much and then i read them and yeah i didn't really enjoy them so much and which is again kind of a tricky thing to decide as well because i think it is good sometimes to push ourselves to read out read outside the books that that we uh you know go into thinking like oh i'm gonna love this book and then you love it and then so i think it is good to maybe stretch the kinds of books you read sometimes and and book prizes are really good for that and encouraging you and that there's a group of people that have selected this book and say like hey this is worth another look if you had you know immediately dismissed it so i think that is valuable but then at the same time i think sometimes those instincts are right and so i i, I don't know it's tricky I, i'm not really sure like what i want to do about that but um but yeah it's something to, to continue um thinking about and yeah and i also want to continue to make videos of like lists of books general lists of books either best books of the year or you know books that um somebody i find really interesting has come up with um that you know i really trust their taste and want to follow that you know whether that's another booktuber or whether that's um some sort of uh author or you know a, a prominent figure um though you know i don't want to just follow lists of like celebrity <laughs> like there's there's a particular um person that's been making videos on youtube recently about books of just picking a celebrity and and any books that they've recommended saying going through and saying that he's read all of them i'm sure you know who i'm talking about because i'm constantly recommended these videos and i've never watched any of them i don't know if he actually has read all of the books that this celebrity is recommended but i always think to myself whenever this is recommended to me like like really it's you would be interested in reading the this celebrity's suggestions because they don't seem like somebody that would have the best taste but i don't know maybe that's me and just my preconceived notions um but obviously it's done very well for him itself and it's done very successful and his videos are constantly being re recommended and have hundreds of thousands of views so for I don't know. But I'd really be interested to know um, what videos you would be interested in me making um, going forward because, you know, I, I want to make videos that I'm really passionate about and interested in, um, but I love getting suggestions of, of videos um, that you would find it interesting for, for me to make. And I've um, made some of those in the, the past year and, um, yeah, and found it really valuable so um so yeah obviously i want to make videos that people are interested in watching as well but um but i'm not going to make videos like just going for for clicks or trying to trying to get more views um because really what is the point of that i mean you might become a big successful youtuber but like would you really be happy i mean i, I sort of like question that of of some youtubers that have become really successful doing that of like finding that niche and the algorithm to like get to the top and 
Um, but I, I definitely like, yeah, I, I, I don't honestly like care all that much about subscriber numbers or views, even though YouTube constantly throws that in your face when you look at the analytics. Um, but, but I don't, I don't like sticking to that too much. I, I just want to, I, I'm only making videos because I'm, I'm passionate about reading and want to share that experience. And I see that as part of the reading experience of sharing that joy and talking about books that either I've read that I'm interested in reading and hearing from you um, about those same things. So that is my somewhat rambly idea of goals or um, resolutions I have for going forward in terms of reading and what I want to create on this channel. So uh, thank you for watching. I'd love to know if you have any goals or resolutions in terms of reading or other things, uh, or yeah, if you have any suggestions of videos you'd like to see me make going forward, um, that would be wonderful. But I hope your reading year is going good so far and you are reading good things um if you, your your year is going good um yeah i'm getting uh, really good with my grammar aren't i <laughs> but uh, but yeah hope you have a good day and i will speak to you again soon bye bye